and welcome to Fin24. I'm Ushweka Vuerta. With me in studio today, we have Sally Mohing from Don Valley, Reputation Management Specialist. Hello, Sally. Hello, Ushweka. Thank you. Thank you for coming in in these very, very hectic times. Very hectic times in terms of reputation. Yeah. In terms of a country's reputation. The sands are shifting indeed. Can you tell me, how has the extreme cabinet reshuffle and the subsequent SNP downgrade affected how the rest of the world views this country? Look, first of all, the investor community is worried. People who invest money for on behalf of other people have to scan the environment, look for safe places with potential to put that money into. But they also look, amongst other things, they look for predictability. They want to know that they're going to put money in a market where there are clear rules of, of, of management, politi the politics are stable, and that there's a, a potential for, for, for that money to, to bear returns, right? You can't put money into a market that is volatile, that is, that is unpredictable, where you don't know where things are going. Because you're managing this money a lot of times on behalf of other people. So from that perspective, I think South Africa has gone to from, from out of the frying pan into the fire. Does it now appear that South Africa is just another African country? Well, much to our dismay, <laughs> much to our dismay. I think South Africans have always seen themselves as uh, the leading African country, or one of the leading African countries. But have we, to the outside world, now become just another African country? I think it didn't start last Friday. I think for for a while now, more than two two years ago, three years ago, people have already been warning us. Mm -hmm. South Africans have been warning the government. Outsiders have been warning South Africans. How many times? Uh, have we had discussions about a potential downgrade? It's not. It didn't start now. It started probably with the firing of uh, the former minister uh, of finance, Plantla Nene, yes. right? Um, so we have been conducting ourselves as if we were the Mugabe's of this mm -hmm. world, the Yoweri Museveni's of this world, who operate in a world where they are not the, they are not part of in institutions. They are the institutions. They make the rules as they go, and and from that perspective, we we it's un it's unfortunate for the country because. This is one country in Africa on which a lot of people have invested a lot of promise, you know, believe that it would be different. There was a lot of belief. There was a lot of hope. Yeah. yeah. Look, we have institutions in South Africa that many countries don't have in Africa. And, but it doesn't make sense to have institutions and then place people who are discredited, who are not ethical, to lead those uh, uh, institutions. Or to, to have a president who, who is constantly seen to be trying to weaken uh, the independence of those institutions. So that's now looking at how the outside world views South Africa mm -hmm. right now. What do you think the working class man in the street, the ordinary South African citizen, what do you think he sees his country as right now? Look, um, the men in the street will start feeling this where as soon as interest rates rise. Maybe they try to, to, to borrow money from a bank. They realize yeah, it that doesn't it's really expensive. affect us when it's on paper. It doesn't really yeah. affect us when we're speaking jargonized. It's very academic now. Very we're academic. Yeah. Right now it's very academic. Right. So what you're saying is as soon as people start feeling it hit their pockets. Yeah, it'll tr it trickle down over the next few weeks. We don't know what the other ratings agencies are going to do. If they take steps that are similar to the ones taken by Standard & Poor, it's going to be to be worse for everybody. Borrowing whatever at whatever level, whether mm -hmm. it's at national level, micro or macro level, mm -hmm. is going to get expensive because all, all, those, all those costs, they get trickled down to the men in the street. So they will feel it. And those people who keep supporting or defending the indefensible leadership that we have right now, will have to ask themselves the question one day whether this is really good for the country. What should those ordinary people, the working class citizens of South Africa, how should they now gear up for the upcoming months? Well, people shouldn't borrow money uh, willy-nilly. They should ask the right questions. They should, they should try to understand how much it's going to cost them in the interest rate to pay, that big, to pay back the, whatever money they want to borrow. So they have to be a bit more wise. They have to, whatever discretionary uh, um, income they have, they need to be very careful how they spend it. Because we, even as I sit here, I have no idea of the real extent. We know it's going to be expensive. We know borrowing is going to be expensive. We know that people who are paying home loans are going to end up paying higher rates in the future, in the near future. But a lot of us don't know to what extent it's going to hit. It is going to hit. We need to just brace ourselves for it. Something that we spoke about earlier, and I think we have to mention, mm. is the fact that there are very many ANC members 
who are now coming out guns blazing against President Jacob Zuma. Those are the ones who have also sometimes been his greatest supporters. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they would have reacted the same had they been consulted? Or are we looking for victories, morality, victories of morality where there are none? Well, look, the cynical me says the same leaders who are complaining now, they're not complaining because the country has been placed in jeopardy, by the way. They're complaining because they were not consulted. There was a constitutional court uh, judgment against Zuma. There, was a, there were other court judgments against Zuma that, that the, the 783 charges against him should be reinstated. All of these people have always rallied against Zuma. I assume that they rallied against him because there was consultation with them and they were happy with the wrong decisions that were taken. Mm. It was for party. Now, no, I haven't heard anyone, even including the, the deputy president, I haven't heard him say, this is wrong for country. It's wrong because the party's uh, traditions of consultation inside were not followed. So had they been consulted, my fear is that they would have gone ahead and defended the indefensible anyway. Is it all doom and gloom? Sonny, tell us something. Tell us something good. Tell us something good. Look, we I need a good story. I hope that this is the big kick in the butt that all of us South Africans need. The wake needed. up call? Yeah, wake up call to do things differently. We need to be very, very careful about the kind of leaders we want for this amazing country. Do you want somebody who's just good at dancing and singing and laughing? Or do you want, what kind of criteria are we going to put in place for a good leader for this country? You know, this is not Zimbabwe. This is not uh, uh, Uganda or all those other countries where the leader is the institution. This is South Africa for God's sake, you know what I'm saying? So we need to be very careful. Do we, what kind of leader are we looking for? What kind of choice are we going to, make? electoral choice are we going to make? What I really hope should happen out of this is that something happens to trigger an, ele an early election. 2019 is too far. We're still going to be, if nothing changes, we're stuck with the same people. They're still arrogant. I haven't heard even the new ministers standing up to say that they don't like the, the, the you know, they, they regret the way things are being done in South Africa. I don't see that. They're all trying to, to create excuses to position themselves as victims of the ratings agencies, the worst white monopoly, capital, God knows what else out there. People need to start looking in the mirror and acknowledging what they really see. And I haven't seen that. You see, you can't change anything if, first of all, there's no acknowledgement that you've been doing something wrong. Is there hope? Well, this is a re resilient country. Uh, South Africans, you know, have fought battles before. We fought against apartheid. We managed to go get over it. I think we, what we need to do now is to wean ourselves from this emotional attachment to people who claim to be heroes and heroines of, aunt, of, 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 of our struggle. We've gone beyond that now. We need leaders who will stand for the modern future South Africa, not the past. We need to forget voting for the past. We should vote for the future. That being said, President Jacob Zuma seems to have fallen in his deepest ditch mm -hmm. yet. But do you think there is still some enough support for him to climb out of that? I think there is sufficient reason for people to put country ahead of party. Whether they're going to do that or not is a different matter. I think that people are more, more worried about their own pockets, about their jobs, about the positions. When they you say people, are we well, speaking about ministers who are already in power, ministers who don't want to yeah. lose their Look, positions? The ordinary South Africans, you and I don't have power. That we, have, we rely on people in the ANC, in the NEC of the ANC, in parliament, to vote together with the opposition, say, on, on a motion of no confidence on, on the president. You and I can just hope. So those people with the power, I just, they're not worried about you and me, they're not worried about the fate of South Africa. Everything indicates that they're worried about themselves. People will only vote against Zuma or in favor of a motion for him to be taken out if they, give, they get given a secret ballot, which is nonsense. I think that people must show their face and because South Africa needs people to say, you know what, enough is enough. I don't care whether I have a job next week, but this is for the country. This country is here to stay. Political parties are not here to stay forever. Do you think Jacob Zuma will survive this and rise again? Jacob As Zuma. it looks now, do you <laughs> think Jacob Zuma will survive this and rise again? I would not bet on him not surviving because I don't trust the ANC. I don't trust the people around the, the uh, Zuma because I do not believe that they are the interests of the country for them matter before the interests of the party. So for that reason, I think that Zuma might survive. I hope he doesn't, but I do not... So you won't discount it. The ANC doesn't put the country first. It puts the party ahead of ANC. So for them, it's about the survival of the ANC, not the survival of South Africa.
So as long as the, 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 the priority is to, to preserve the party at, what, at whatever cost, no matter what happens to the country, then Zuma might still live to see another day, unfortunately. I think this has been a very, very insightful interview, and we hope to have Sally back in studio in the near future to catch up. Thank um, you. Hopefully there won't be too many, too many extreme happenings. Oh, yeah, yeah. It will be what it will be, but we must keep talking. We must keep pushing back. We live in a country where, fortunately, we can still say enough is enough, enough. Keep making the noises. There are countries where if you stand up in a studio like this and say something, the next thing you know, you don't exist anymore. We must keep pushing the boundaries. Thanks, Sally. And we Thanks. do exist. Yeah.